Today I'm with Marcelo Cruz. She's from New Jersey. How did you do on your match? Um, I just lost 8-5. So. What were the most memorable moments in tennis? I think playing on Madison Square Garden, playing tournaments, usually I always remember those special tournaments. What were the most embarrassing moments in tennis? Missing the ball, like not even getting to hit, just a mit total miss hit every single time. Well, good luck to your matches and thank you for having your time here. Today we are at the Long Jean Junior Tournament. I'm I am with Scarlett. She's 12 years old and she's from New Jersey. So how did you do?
Well, I'm in the semifinals of the consolation. Wow, congratulations. What were the most, what were the most memorable moments in your tennis? Um, the most memorable moments I had in tennis was uh, when I did like an overhead half tweener thing. <laughs> It was actually kind of fun because I actually hit myself in the leg, but it still went over the net. Tell me about your essay. Um, well, my essay was about helping other people and giving back to the community. Thank, thank you for having your time here, and good luck. Today we are at the Long Jeans Future Ace Tournament. I'm with Jennifer Lee. She's 12 years old, and she's from New York. So how on your match? Uh, I lost my first round match and then I won the back draw. Okay. Who, influ who influenced you to play tennis? Uh, mostly my dad. He, t he started tennis when I was three years old. So then, uh, yeah, so he, yeah, he kind of influenced me to play tennis. What was your essay about? Uh, I was, in school I helped tutor kids, so I put that as a way of giving back to the community, so that's what I wrote about. What was the most memorable moment in tennis? That was when I played with Michelle Obama, uh, like summer, during the summer, I played with her and it was, yeah. What was the most embarrassing moment in tennis? The most embarrassing moment in tennis. I don't know. Okay, thank you for having your time here and good luck. Today we are at the first ace junior tournament and I am with Chelsea Williams. She's 11 years old from Brooklyn. So how'd you keep on going with the match? Well, I just try to stay in there and fight and to get good groove on until I won. What, what was your um, favorite shot in that game? I guess my serve because it was working, it was really powerful and she couldn't return it, so. What were the memorable moments in tennis? When I won my first tournament, I was really happy and I always, re I always would remember that. How do you feel now? I feel happy because I won. Well, thanks for having time for this interview and Good luck. Um, what influenced me to become a tennis player? Fifth grade, Long Beach, California. Next to me is Susan Williams. She looks at me and says, do you want to play tennis? And I said, what's tennis? <laughs> I said, I've never heard of it. What do you do? She says, you get to run, jump, and hit a ball. And I go, those are my three most, I, I just love those three things the most in sports. I said, I'll try it with you. I go out, I try it. I go, well, that was at a country club because Susan's parents had money. I go, well, this is nice when I go to the club with Susan, maybe I'll play. But then we're playing softball out at Houghton Park and Susan and I are both out there and 
the coach said, you know, they get free instruction here every Tuesday. Now I'm interested. So the first time I go out for free instructions at, at 11 years of age, at the end of the day, uh, I knew what I wanted to do with my life. I told my mom when she came to pick me up that I wanted to be the number one tennis player in the world. And she said, that's fine, but you have homework. <laughs> and uh, don't worry. And I said, no, no, you don't understand. This is what I'm, I, I know this is what I want to do with the rest of my life. And she just looked at me like, okay, fine, honey. She thought that would last two weeks. <laughs> Five years later, my younger brother sitting at the uh, dinner table says to my parents and me, I want to be a major league baseball player. <laughs> and my parents do not care if we're any good, by the way. They could care less. My parents went, oh my God, another one. They said, I mean, and they were always very concerned. They never wanted us to play for them, but for ourselves, okay? My parents never, never put any pressure on my, my brother. I, we pushed my parents, so they ended up working three jobs so my brother and I could follow our dreams. So my parents are very important to me. My dad was a firefighter, and my mother was a homemaker at the beginning, and they ended up going to work to help pay, uh, very much like it is today. Uh, if you're raised by a single parent, you know how hard they have to work, and a lot of families, obviously with two parents, both work as well. So it's very, very difficult today. So it took a lot for my parents to help us. So I'm indebted to them for, obviously, forever. Okay, that's one question. Let's go to this one, and we'll go back. How did you prepare for matches? How did I prepare for matches? It takes time to learn how to prepare. Because it takes a lot of experience and effort. So. One thing it's very important is to start having rituals, whatever that means. I'm talking about just before the match, you're talking about practice or what? In here or body-wise? Okay, there's, there's three big parts to it. There's your mind, your heart, and your guts, okay? And it's really important to ask yourself before and after the match, I call it, I, I call it um, quotients. So I asked, like, when I helped Coach Martina Narvatolo, I said, how was your gut quotient today? I had her measure it, one to ten. One being the worst, ten being really good. Because we have a saying, always leave your guts on the court. Then you have no um, misgivings about what happened. You just feel good about yourself, no matter what the, the result. And the most important thing to win is staying in the process in the process, not thinking in the back that much, or not thinking forward. Like if you started thinking about, oh, you know, like, let's say it's it's like 6-3, 4-2, and you go, oh, I'm almost, oh, oh. you can see the, the trophy in your head, you're toast. Don't do that. Stay in the now. Stay in the present. It's really big. Okay? Obviously, you have to work hard, but you've got to get your heart, I mean, your head, your head, heart, and guts, and your stomach all integrated, all together all together and that's what makes greatness most of the players you see that don't even make it to the top even the even if you take the top five and then you start separating the top five have all three together and even murray who's what number four in men's tennis is he number four he's number four he doesn't have this yet so if he doesn't get this he'll never he'll never be as good as he should be okay what god has given him so that's, I pray for him that he'll get his head together. This is not, this is like a four with him. This could be a 10, this can be a 10, but he's not cutting it here. And sometimes he's not cutting it here, okay? How about the girls? Can you think about the girls? Rachel Anybody? Lynn, so you, she's 11 year old and she just won a long ga games future ace. Congratulations. What kept you going? Well, um, I mean, just my determination to win this whole thing and keep playing well. <laughs> what strategy did you use for this game? Well, um, I was just trying to stay really focused, keep my eye on the ball, and uh, be consistent. <laughs> How much do you practice? Well, um, I practice almost every day for about three to, f three to four hours. So are you excited that you're going to Paris? Yeah, I'm really excited. Oh, thank you for having this time, and good luck to your other matches in Paris. Thank you.